Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another live session with the Hype Magazine. I'm your editor in chief, Jerry Doby. And this morning, I've got an amazing guest with me who is the curator of one of the hottest, most important art displays in existence right now at Northwestern University. Her name is Janet Deeds, and she is the curator of an ex exhibition called A Site of Struggle, American Art Against Anti-Black Violence. It's currently being displayed at the Block Museum at Northwestern University, and she's the lady who is responsible for putting it together. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, Jerry, and um, welcome. It's a it's an honor to be on this show with you. Oh man, you do wonders for my ego, young lioness. You do wonders for my. Ego. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your entry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so from the inside looking out, let's talk about Janet and what brought you to the art world. Okay. Well, um, as you said, I'm the curator of modern contemporary art at the Block Museum of Art in Northwestern. And I've been there about six, six and a half years in that capacity. Um, and I've been working as a curator for gosh, over 13 years now and worked in the arts in various capacities for, um, gosh, going on over 20, over 20 years, both wow. in the, yeah, in the commercial sector and also in museum education and higher ed. Um, and I first um, got interested in art, art in art history when I was in college. Um, I actually just went to, um, started out as a computer science major in undergrad, um, but then took my first um, art history course and I was just um, hooked. I really loved the way in which art and studying art history was a window onto so many different areas of knowledge um, from history to philosophy, politics, um, and I just, um, yeah, found it uh, just so engaging, and it helped. And it, I found, like, by studying art, um, that it helped to me to kind of understand things or solidify things that were like maybe difficult to get to in other arenas. So, like, I found that my understanding of history was solidified through studying art history and things of that nature. Yeah, and okay. so that's kind of how I got got involved yeah <laughs> so was there like a defining moment that made you take the actual plunge and take and and launch a career in this um I think it well there was that initial experience you know in the classroom right. and just my mind being on fire and then I I had this moment where I was like, oh, I'm gonna graduate with a degree in art history. Like, what, what am I gonna do with that? Oh. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, I took advantage of the fact that I was, you know, in school in New York City and there's so many different um, museums and art organizations to intern and um, do different kinds of uh, jobs to kind of figure out what the options were. Mm. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, um, and there was really, I think, um, I worked um, at the New Museum of Contemporary Art. I remember this when I was an undergraduate. It's still there, but um, this was before it moved to its current location. And I, I worked like at the front desk, okay. but I got to interact with artists and um, and interact with the visitors who were, you know, and, and hear their kind of responses to the art that was on view and the kinds of, um, you know, ideas and opening up. And that's what I think really kind of um, inspired me. That was one of the kind of the inspirations of thinking about both the um, creativity in the arts, but also how it um, engaged with people and thinking about the museum, especially as a forum in which you can engage with the broader public um, through the arts. Okay. Yeah. So why do you feel, as a subject matter expert, why do you feel that art is such a, a, a key, should be a key part of educating our, our next generations? Yeah. Well, I, I think that art um, has this capacity to um, draw us in 
and get us to pause and consider things that um, we may not consider otherwise. And I, I found that, um, you know, I focus on the visual arts, but I find that in my own personal life, music has been that as well, right? Uh, you know, other kinds of art, right? right. And, and, it, and it may cause you to kind of stop and pay attention um, in a way um, that's, say, different than if we're engaging in like a political discourse or, you know, in another arena, right? But can kind of get you to the same information and the same knowledge. Okay. Um, yeah. I love it. That was great. That was great. Uh, we live in a fast moving world. How do we get people to slow down and kind of take that all in? That's yeah. a marketing question. It's probably not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know that I, I can make anyone do anything. I give the invitation, you know, um, and um, find that it's accepted. And I think that, um, you know, we are living in a fast moving world, but I think with that, people are also looking for those um, places to be able to slow down and to have more, um, to have slower experiences and more cont contemplative experiences. So I think the museums and art can offer that. Yeah. Hit a bomb. Look, as a curator, what draws you to a piece of art? How do you, I mean, break it down for me, like some, some producers of some, some artists start with the beat in order to write. Some people mm -hmm. have a melody and then they start to write. What is it about a piece of art Earth. that draws okay. you? Yeah. Um, I think, I, well, I'm thinking about um, I'll take an example from this particular um, exhibition I'm currently working on. With me, um, it's usually all my exhibitions start with an artwork or two or three that uh, kind of haunts me, that I can't get out of my mind, right? Whether it's because of the way it's um, creatively engaging with a particular subject matter or because of its formal, you know, beauty or qualities. Um, and, it, and so it has this quality that kind of engages me and haunts me and keeps me thinking about it and keeps me um, wanting to, to learn more. Um, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of haunting, yeah. um, <laughs> a site of struggle, American art against anti-Black violence. Mm -hmm. Yo, I opened that book. First of all, I got some promo pictures in order to do the, the previous article, the, the announcement that it's that this exhibit is live. Yes. I'm 59. I've seen a few things. And one of the things that caught me was the stop the white police, hmm. you know what I mean, from killing us. Yeah. That was that one made me stop like dead in my tracks. I'm like, you know, we've been talking about this for more than 300 years. You know, um, and today we're even today we're still talking about it. So talk to me about how you pulled this exhibit together. It's a fantastic exhibit. I I, I got the hard copy of the book, and um, like I told you off camera earlier, I, I made my daughter do a book report on this book because I feel it's very important. So talk to me about what drove you to put this particular exhibit together. Yeah. Well, it's, um, you know, exactly what you were talking about, Jerry, and that I'm thinking the of the work that you're referring to is a photograph by um, African American photographer named Daryl Cowherd, um, entitled Stop White, Police from Killing Us. And it was created um, in the in 1960, I think it was 1966. Um, he was a photographer, you know, was based in the South Side of Chicago at the time, very active in the Black Arts Movement. Um, but this photograph was taken on a um, trip to St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. And I was thinking about how, you know, yeah, 2004, you know, thinking about Ferguson, not <laughs> so far away, like you yeah. said, there's these, right. these parallels. Um, and so I had seen, you know, um, there art that had been engaging with this issue for a long time. The, um, the seed of this idea, you know, I, this idea is this exhibition has been in research and development for six years. Um, and the seed of it had been going back um, further. But um, I was really um, drawn to focus on um, doing an exhibition that really did a kind of prehistory or a pre-art history of our present moment yeah. to um, help to um, 
kind of convey that understanding of that the issues that we're grappling with right now are not new. Mm -hmm. And as long as um, anti-Black violence has been an issue within our country, artists have found ways to um, use art to either protest that violence to as a form of processing, as a, well as a form of memorialization and mourning and those who we've lost. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was important um, in this in this time for us to have that historical to produce something that could give that historical context. Um, yeah. We'll talk about history. So this this exhibit like encapsulate what about a hundred years worth of art from uh, about yeah so it's um the earliest um object in the exhibitions from 1895 mm -hmm. um and it's the original copy of um the pamphlet a red record that was written by the anti-lynching activist ida b wells mm -hmm. um and the most the most recent work was created in 2021 but it was looking back at an incident that happened in 2008 so it's really um framed by the rise of anti-lynching activism in the in the 1890s in the post-reconstruction era and ending with the founding of Black Lives Matter in 2013. Mm. Um, yeah. Wow. All right. So the exhibit opened on January 26th. It's running through July 10th. Yes. At Northwestern University Block Museum of Art. 40 Art Circle Drive, Evanston. Is that in Illinois? Where is Northwestern? Um, it's Evanston, it's in Illinois. We're um, um, Evanston borders Chicago. It's the first suburb uh, if you go north along the lake. Yeah. Okay. So, I was yeah. guessing. I was guessing. I didn't have, I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't bother to look up the location of Northwestern. I was, <laughs> I was kind of, I've been kind of busy, but I was also excited just to more know about you. Because first, first and foremost, as a career path, mm -hmm. never had a conversation with someone who looks like me mm -hmm. that is a curator of art. Mm -hmm. First of all, I failed art class, high school, in college. No, I, you know, I couldn't even draw a tree mm -hmm. really well. So I had no appreciation or, or something's blocking me from like appreciating the beauty of this or that and understanding the story maybe that the, you know, so I tried, you know, to, to, to understand, I tried to grasp Basquiat, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the hell is this man talking about on these napkins and postcards? I have no idea what his art was pretending. So I have no, how do you educate someone like me who's that hard headed? Um. Well, I, I just um, hope people come with an open mind, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, like, you can, um, you can do the work and um, present it and invite people to come with an open mind. Um, in terms of, um, you know, what we do at the museum, um, we're an, a museum that's free and open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't cost you anything but you know, the, the, the time and the desire to come. And we also have a full slate of free public programs. Um, and for this exhibition, they're both, um, there's some that are online so that a national audience can tune in as well as some in person. So we, you know, we see the, the mission of the, of the museum is to be a teaching and learning, you know, facility. And so we think about all the ways that we can help support that mission and make and, and help, um, you know, make things accessible. And um, I sort of think about a wide variety of um, programs that um, may appeal to different people that so you can find your way in, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I am a tired old guy mm -hmm. watching it. And here you are a young person who's also obviously tired of watching it and knowing that um, our history. So you 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 told the the, the Chicago Sun Times, you know that um, we're still grappling with racial violence as an issue in our country, and that you think the ex in a paraphrasing, of course, um, that you think the exhibition uh, like this one gives an opportunity to put our contemporary moment into a larger historical context. 
please put that in label terms. Okay. Well, what that means um, um, to me is that um, when we talk about specific incidents of violence that happened today, it, um, when people understand that this is not, that they're not isolated and they're not new, that there's a long history. And I think if we're going to um, do, you know, develop solutions that are lasting, right, that we have to understand that this is not about, you know, one isolated incident, but that's about a longer kind of history and pattern within our country. So I guess that's the easiest, <laughs> the most you know. way to put it, yeah. You, <laughs> uh, you know, I love your work. I appreciate you and respect you for what you do. So thank you, first of all. Um, I know, like you said, this has been, you know, being researched for over six years, et cetera. And, uh, but it takes some intestinal fortitude to like fight the powers that be that don't want these pieces shown and don't want the information disseminated to the next generation. I mean, we have, for God's sake, laws like this probably couldn't, this exhibit couldn't exist in Florida since DeSantis has said, you know, we can't uh, do or say anything that makes white people uncomfortable. And he made that a law. So, you know, shout out to you and shout out to Northwestern for making this exhibit available and the fact that you have an online component um, is a big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you guys need to go to uh, blockmuseum.northwestern.edu and get a bar of what's going on. This is a, an amazing exhibit. It's an amazing book. It's more than a tabletop book. It's a teaching um, resource. And I hope that it you know, does well on the shelves. I don't know when the book is, is slated to release or if it's already been released, but we have to promote this book. We have to promote this exhibit. Where does it go after it leaves Northwestern? So it'll be at Northwestern until July 10th. And then after that, it's actually going to the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay. okay. And it'll be there. Um, starting, I think it's uh, August, uh, I think it's August 13th through November 8th. Yes. <laughs> okay. Do we know, will it ever have a, like a permanent home or all, do all these pieces go back to their owners or different? Um, yeah, so after the, so, you know, after it travels to Montgomery, it'll be there through November of 2022. And then many of the, the pieces will go back to their homes. They were borrowed from um, different institutions nationally. Um, and mm -hmm. so they'll go back to their respective uh, okay. collections. But it, like you said, live on in the, in the publication. Uh, and, um, and there'll also be an archive online of the different programs and okay. things that um, we've had so that you can access that through our website as well. Look, it means something to me. I looked at the book and, you know, some of the things are going to be gut-wrenching. Some of them will be soothing because it also celebrates you know, the resilience of the Black family mm -hmm. um, through it all and the Black community. We always seem to find a way to pull together. And I love, you know, some of the pieces as they exhibit that cohesiveness as a community, not just within our local spheres, but globally, you know what I mean? So, um, once again, thank you to Northwestern and a huge thanks to Miss Janet Dees, you know, for putting this together. Seeing this collection all in one space, walking around and experiencing it, I think would be such a big blessing to anybody who can get there, whether you're doing it at Northwestern in, you know, in, in Illinois or later in the South down there um, in Alabama. The book is great, mm -hmm. but something about the physical presence of these pieces has got to be something that that gives you a, 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 a chill, you know what I mean? And some visible reaction, perhaps. Um, how do you feel, Janet, when you walk through the exhibit? Um, I think for me um 
I mean, there's a couple of things. Um, you know, the exhibition's been up about a week and a half, and um, for me, what I feel, I feel a lot of gratitude for all of the um, artists who um, dedicated themselves to engaging with this material so that we have it, and um, and also that um, the, the exhibition is being used in a way that I intended, kind of the way that you said, as a resource to support um, work that's happening in the classroom to teach this material, but also work from organizations within our community um, who are working for racial justice. So that that's that's what I feel, but just that um, um, I feel the heaviness of it, but I feel a lot of um, gratitude for the work of so many people um, that are you know doing this work in other ways. And so I'm glad that I'm able to um, have this offering to support that work. Yeah, I think that that I was so overwhelmed with the presentation that I forgot to be grateful to those who shared, you know, their feelings, their experience, and uh, I'm going to go back and do it again. And actually, it's going to live on my office shelf back here. Uh, I've already, like I said, my, my youngest child is 14. I've already made her um, go through it and write me a report that I was satisfied with that <laughs> let me know she understood the importance and what the meaning, what they were trying to convey you know, mm -hmm. throughout the book. And she did a good job, not bad for 14. So, um, you know, is there anything you wanted to cover, Janet, that I may have missed? I'm not a great discusser of art, so I'm doing, I'm counting on you to lead me. Well, um, I think you're doing pretty well, and I have gratitude for you as someone who's saying that you're not an art person for being um, open, right, to, and and uh, um, and engaging with this. So I have great gratitude to you for that. Um, I think the thing I want to um, I want to emphasize is that um, you know this hasn't been a solo um, journey. There, it's been um, um, lots of both formal. Um, consultation and informal conversations with scholars across the country, other museum professionals, um, as well as staff and faculty and students at Northwestern and um, people who are involved in community organization within Evanston and in Chicago, um, who gave their, their input and their support. And so I just wanna uplift that um, because we don't do anything like this on our own. So that's important um, for me to, um, yeah, that I wanted to share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, is there anything that you wanted to cover other than the thank yous? Like some some point about art. Give me some about art that only Janet could spit. Okay. Come on. Um, I mean, I think just what I said that I just really have a deep belief in the power of art to um, Get to, to get us to pause to like consider things that um to see things differently literally to see things differently yeah <laughs> okay. um yeah and right. um i think you're somebody that they should follow how can they follow janadies um well you can um sign up for the newsletter at, um, at the block museum of art so all of the um work that i do there and um uh, and all the information around this exhibition will will come through those channels. Um, so that would be, I guess, the easiest, yeah, the easiest, most direct way. Uh, I just hit the red button that says subscribe. Mm -hmm. And it's very important. Look at here. You know, I, I just I can't thank you enough for the work that you do. I appreciate you being someone that we can show our children that, mm -hmm. you know what, you don't have to be a rapper, you don't have to be an actor, you don't have to be a clown in the street. You can take a more serious path and help enlighten others. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's a big shout out to you for being that. Thank you. Somebody that my daughter can look at and say, oh, I have another option. You know, we don't have to be the rah-rah cheerleader, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can dive deeper into life and under, have to get some understanding and share the understanding with other people. I think, um, yeah, you're inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. It was such a pleasure to speak with you. Yeah. Pleasure to speak with you as well. All right, everybody. Die Magazine live sessions. Look.
Kennedy's amazing person. She's a leader, whether she wants to accept the role or not. I'm putting her there, dog on it, because she is, you know, leading the charge to make sure that we don't forget um, some of the more hurtful parts of our history, but also um, putting together pieces that demonstrate how strong we are as a community and how resilient we are as a community. We are delivered through an exhibit she takes us on a journey with this exhibit, but we're delivered safely on the other side and probably should be motivated to make certain that history doesn't continue to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's an art exhibit, not just for black people, it's an art exhibit for the world. And I think you've done an exceptional, exceptional job. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Take care. You too. Be well.